Hello, this is Quando. I come to the table. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is a Friday morning, and this is when I usually do my come to the tables Friday mornings at 10 a.m. And guess what? It's also Christmas time. Christmas is actually a time of hope for us. As Christians, you know, Jesus came and he came with a purpose to save mankind, to rescue us from our sin, to create a way for us to be connected to the Father. And so this is a time where we can actually jump in and grab a hold of that hope as we read the scriptures. But you know, a lot of people don't do that. A lot of people are living in fear. They're living in anxiety. Uh, just over Christmas time, there's so much going on. We have so much to do. And, you know, do we have the money to do what we thought we wanted to do? And because it's all about, becomes all about gifts. And it becomes about, you know, what does this season look like for us? And we put a lot of expectation in and hope into how it looks versus into the one who gives us hope. And that's Jesus. And so today, you know, I'm talking about, I'm talking about the scripture in Luke 2, verse uh, 10 and 11. And so I'm just going to read that to you. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Messiah, the Lord. A Savior has been born. A Savior who triumphed who overcame death and the grave and conquered the darkest place. The curse of death was put upon him. The curse of sin was put upon him. Even his father couldn't look on him. And yet he chose that path and he overcame for us. And we can triumph. But how do we triumph in this time when there's fear in our lives? You know, God was teaching me how to overcome fear. And... And that was really good to know how that, that recognized my thoughts, right? I had one thought coming in and it's not my thought, it's the enemy's thought and it's causing me great fear and anxiety and I can't really function well. So I need to recognize it's a lie and what's the truth and begin to release it, really, um, to replace it with the truth. But I was listening to a father, and you know, someone was saying on the conversation, well, you know, we need to get rid of our fear. And I think that's our general thought, let's just get rid of our fear. Um, you know, we're going to conquer this fear thing. Well, the reality is there are things that come into our lives as humans. We become afraid. Now, the thing is, is what we do with it, right? And so he gave the scripture, Psalm 56, three and four, it says, but in that day that I'm afraid, here's the reality. The shepherds, they were afraid. They were shocked. They were like, what's going on here? You know, and we get afraid. We're like, what's going on here? I don't understand. You know, and there's things in our lives. And we're feeling afraid inside. But he said, but on that day that I'm afraid, I lay my fears before you. Why? Because the good news came. The good news. The good news. Jesus who triumphed came. And so there's good news before you. We can lay our fears before him knowing he's already conquered. I lay my fears before you and trusting you with all my heart. What harm can man bring to me? With God on my side, I will not be afraid of what comes. The roaring praises of God fill my heart and I will always triumph as I trust in his promises. And so I'm reading that and I'm thinking, God, you know, in that day when I'm afraid, I need to recognize that those thoughts aren't my thoughts. They're the enemy's thoughts. And I can, I can replace them with your word, your promises. I can, I can do that shift. But what I need to do is really just trust in you. You're the one who came with the good news. The good news, Jesus Christ is born. What? To save the people from their sin, to bring hope and redemption to the world. There's good news in Jesus. You know, one of the things that we need to understand is he is for you. He's for you. You know, when you're feeling and you're concerned and there's things going on in your life and, you know, the world is about to be changed, it seems. And there's there's just like atmospheric 
uh, you know, confusion at times and, and you just don't know what to do. Understand that as you just begin to say, okay, God, today I trust in you. I don't understand, but I do know that I can trust in you because you have triumphed. And as you do that, as you lay your fears before him, there is victory in that sound. I realized when I was feeling upset, when I was feeling overwhelmed, what was I doing? I was thinking of all those things that overwhelmed me. You know what I needed to do was praise. And it was like, it was like this little, little bit of praise. Oh, just, you know, yeah, God. Okay. Thank you. But you know, I'm feeling this way. It's no, let the roaring praises of God fill you. Let the roaring praises of God fill your heart. That means I'm going to go after that thing. I'm going to release the glory into it. I'm going to release the presence of God. I'm going to thank God for who he is. You came with purpose. I will not be defeated in this time. I thank you that you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, that your kingdom is without end, that I can grab a hold of you and you have an answer for me. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, God, that I can praise you with my lips and I can lift up your name. And I know that as I lift up your name, there is a shift in the atmosphere. There's a roaring praises of God. He wants us to come with roaring praises because he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Jesus came with purpose. And you know, when we, when we feel that fear, we need to just cancel it with the roaring praises of God, because there's hope. There is hope that is brought to us through Jesus who came to the earth. He came the, and the angels announced it. They said, to the, they said to the shepherds, don't be afraid. There's good news. This is good news for you. And, you know, I remember just feeling at times, just feeling overwhelmed. These are different times in my life. What God say to me, he said, release my glory release my glory into that situation. What is the glory? It's his presence. It's, it's his, it's his, the Holy Spirit just to release him into that. We do that by praising him, by lifting him up, by declaring his name, by singing over, over the situation, the goodness of God, by saying, no, I will not give in. I'm going to lift up the name of Jesus because there is a promise that he's given. There is a hope that he's given. And it came in the form of Jesus Christ himself. He is the hope. He is our eternal hope. I was just uh, ministering to a young lady and, um, you know, she was telling me her story and how she was feeling. You could see the oppression on her face. And in my heart, I'm like, well, you know, and I'm start to fix it. Who tries to fix things, right? When you see someone in trouble or you see it, you know, just you go to, there's a go to and you try to fix it. You try to give them a word from the Lord or just, you know, see a new perspective. And, and God reminded me, he said, remember, I told you, release my glory. So that's what I did. I just started saying, I just release the glory of the Lord over you. I just release the, the eternal purposes of God to be manifest in this time. I release his presence over you. I just say the glory of the Lord come and descend and give you clarity and thought. The glory of the Lord rest on you. Hallelujah. And as I began to do that, you know what? She shifted. She totally shifted. Her face shifted. Her countenance shifted. She began to come into agreement because I don't have the answers. You know, when someone is down, when someone's upset, when someone's overwhelmed, you can try and fix it. You can try and tell them some good things and you can try and give them some words of advice and new perspective, but that's not what's going to change everything. It's the glory of the Lord. It's the presence of God. It's him, it's him alone. You know, as the angels came, there was this glory sound that descended on the earth. There was this glory sound that shifted the atmosphere to announce that King Jesus was in the house, to announce that King Jesus had arrived on the scene and there was a turnaround and there was a triumph and there was an overcoming power that was just released into the earth. There was a glory sound. And today it's your time to release the glory sound. No more sounds of the fear and hopelessness because you don't live in that place. You know, God was saying, he is for you. God is for you. He is for you. He's for you. He's not against you. He's for you. And he is for you, for you, 
He's for you. He's not looking for, uh, you know, for this person and that person. He's for each one of us individually. He comes and meets us where we're at. He is for you. He sees your situation. He knows where you are. He knows what's going on in your thoughts. He knows the things you're sensing and feeling. He knows what he has ahead for you. And he is for you. Remember that in the middle of that. When you're going through something, when you're seeing life in a, in a way that just may overwhelm you, he is for you. He sees you. He knows you. And so we can put our trust in that kind of God, that kind of Savior, Redeemer, our hope. Put your trust in that. He is for you. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. And you know, um, I'm here seeing here, Elizabeth, she's saying, I really needed this. I'm going through some sort of fear as I'm in experiencing injustice at work. There's places of injustice. There's places of disappointment. There's places of the unknown. And God says, now it's time just to begin to trust in me. For what can me, for what can man do to me? What can man do to us? We have this eternal hope and eternal purpose. You know, he wants us to live with integrity. He wants us to be upright. He wants us to live, you know, in, in the way of his word. And as we do that, as we come to into alignment with him, as we get to know his character, as we get to know his ways, you know, understanding that he is for us, that what can man do to us? He's the one that stands on our behalf. He is our rescuer. He is our shield. He is our fortress. You know, we put our trust in the temporal realm, but it won't be that way anymore. We're coming into a realm of the eternal. I believe in 2024. Have you been, have you been asking God about 2024? We can't come into this 2024 with fear saying, oh my goodness, we have this government and this is what's happening over here. And do you see the family situation? And you know what? Begin to contend for what you see. Release the glory into it. There is an eternal hope that is coming into those situations. Those things that you're seeing are actually Actually, things that are not to cause you fear, but to cause you to begin to push through in praise and say, God, you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords over the situation. You see families in our in our nation that are breaking apart, but I declare that our families are coming together, that our families are being reunited. I thank you, Lord, that you know how to bring that into place. You know how to change the situation. God, you know how to soften hearts and turn the hearts of the father towards their children, the hearts of the children towards their father, and the same with mothers. You know how to do this, Lord, and begin to praise him and put your trust in him. No, don't be worried about it. Don't be fearful about it. Begin to put your trust in him. There there are open doors coming in 2024 that you're going to step into. You got to close the door of fear and begin to step into that praise realm, into that realm where you're bringing the glory into the situation. You're not, you're not fearing the situation. You're bringing the glory. We're releasing something new into this place. The angels release the glory into the earth. They said, Jesus Christ is born. And they begin to sing and they begin to bring praise into the earth. And that is what's happening in this time. And we can come with that heart of expectation. I'm going to release the glory into this situation. I'm releasing the presence of God through my praise. As I lift up the name of Jesus, the atmosphere is shifting. Something is turning around. You know, I was uh, listening to a, um, a musician. His name is uh, Phil, um, Phil Driscoll. And um, I had put him on, uh, oh, I had saw, seen him on Instagram. And he said, I was looking for it. And there's something wrong with my uh, system here. So I can't, can't tell you exactly what he said. But I know what he said in the gist of it. And that was that praise is not a tool for when something has already been done by God. When we see the manifestation, praise is intended to bring the manifestation. We release the manifestation through our praise. 
So it's not like, oh, thank you, Jesus. It's all praise you, Jesus. You're so good because now I've seen it accomplished. No, our praise is intended to be released in the middle of the situation. That's the glory we're releasing in order for his presence to come and be manifest on earth. What is his kingdom? His kingdom realm is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. As we release the praises, as we release that hope, that eternal sound, what are we doing? We're shifting from the earth earth temporal realm into the eternal realm we're shifting the earth to the kingdom realm and we're bringing righteousness peace and joy we're bringing a new sound in as we begin to release the glory there is good news in the glory there's good news in the glory begin to praise him lift up your voice what are the sounds of praise that you can even speak right now over your situation over what you're seeing because god is showing you something in this moment so that you can turn it around there is a glory that is being released into the earth so that in 2024 we're not going to be looking at the temporal realm anymore we're going to begin to see with clarity in the eternal realm we're going to begin to hear as we draw near to him as we begin to sing praises as we begin to find capture his heart find who, out who he is learn that learn what's on his heart oh god break my heart for what breaks yours as we begin to go in that place we're not going to know what glory to release and it's going to be automatic for us we're going to go into the eternal realm instead of into that temporal seeing things with our own eyes yeah we're going to see with provision, precision. I see that there is a clarity coming and a precision that's coming to your sight in 2024. A precision where you can see, where you can see what is happening in the spirit realm. And you're going to be able to discern between what the enemy's voice is, what you're hearing and what uh, what is of the earth and what God's voice is. You're going to have, there's this cutting, this sword, this dividing in your heart. And this comes from your praise. As you begin to praise the Lord, as you begin to lift up his name, as you draw near to him, he draws near to you. He's calling you into his heart to be able to hear him with such clarity like never before. We can't be waffling in this season. We can't be out there, um, you know, feeling sorry for ourselves. That time is over with. If you want to grow up, if you want to mature, you have to stop feeling sorry for yourself. It's not the way to go. You have someone who has come to rescue you. Jesus, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. There's an announcement in the air. He is here. He is the redeeming power. He is your restoration. This is a year of restoring your joy in the middle of the circumstance. Guess what? That doesn't mean you're not going to have a circumstance. It means that in the middle of the circumstance, he is restoring your joy. There's a restoration of joy, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. This is the kingdom of God. Let's face it. We have fear. We can't totally eradicate it in this earth. But what we can do is we can take it captive. We can take it captive. And we can begin to lean in and trust trust in the eternal one, trust in the one who brought the good news, who came, who triumphed over death, trust in that. And, and how's our trust? We just release our, our own fear. We just say, I release that to you. I lay my fears before you. I trust you today. And I'm just going to praise you and release the glory of God into the situation. I don't know, but you do. And as you do that, you will know. You will know. He'll show you. He'll show you the way. You know, I say, teach me your ways, O Lord, that I might walk in your paths. I don't know the path, but teach me your ways that I might walk in that path. You know, the eyes of the Lord are roaming to and fro over the earth to show himself strong on behalf of those who are fully devoted to him. Second Chronicles 16, 9. The Lord is looking for those who will show so that he can show himself strong. He's looking over the earth to show himself strong on behalf of those who are fully devoted to him. As you lean into him, you put your trust in him. He's looking for your, those hearts and he wants to show himself strong in your situation and in your home, in your thoughts, in your emotions, in your finances. What are those promises of God? He wants to show himself strong in your life. He is 
for you. He is for you and he is for you. <laughs> and so I want you to know that in your situation, he's there seeing you. He sees you. And be as you begin to praise him and release the glory, you're going to hear what he's seeing. When you're stuck in all the other stuff, you're not trusting. You're just stuck in the realm of what you see, what you're feeling, what, what it looks like. Then you're not going to be able to, to grasp the truth of the eternal, that he's for you. He's triumphed. There's hope in this situation. So the angels came. They said, fear not. What they do, what they, do they released the glory sound. They released the hope into the earth. It's our time to release the glory sound. It's our time to release the glory sound. Get out of you, looking in the natural. Get out of it. Yeah. You know, God's saying to you, you know, you know, you know, you have to, you know, you have to in 2024 where we are moving out of the place where we see just with the temporal eyes, we are going to see with the eternal realm. And so there is a maturity coming to the body of Christ and those who want it will receive it. Those who want it will receive it. God's looking for those who will rise up. He wants to give those who want to rise up. He wants to give you strength. Rise up out of the despair. Rise out of, up out of, uh, out of the despondency. Rise up out of the pain. You can't do that on your own. You need to release something new into your situation. You need to release something new from your mouth. You need to put something new in your thoughts. It's time to make it clear that you are releasing the glory. You will not stand for um, what the enemy's been trying to do to you to pull you back. In 2024, you're going to rise up. Rise up. There's a new sound coming from your mouth. The roaring praises of God. Let them be on your lips because that is the glory sound that you are releasing. That you are releasing. Come on. I want you to begin to make a roaring sound over your situation. What roaring sound are you going to make right now? What roaring sound are you going to make? Yeah over your situation, over, over what you thought has consumed you this year. No, we're going to close the door on that. We're going to shift that right now in the name of Jesus. As we bring the praises of God, we usher in the presence of God. That is the glory realm of the spirit that we're just ushering into our homes and into the situation. What do you need to bring praises into? Where are the roaring praises going to rise from? They arise from our belly out of the innermost part of our belly. Let it come up and flow out of you. Allow it to allow it to be released through you. You know, as we release it, we are shifting the atmospheres. Those roaring praises of God fill my heart and I will always triumph as I trust in his promises. Yes. And so what are we trusting in? Not just anything. We're trusting in the promises of God. You know, when you think of your your, your life right now. What are the promises he's given you? Don't look at the problem. Look at the promises. Begin to raise those promises up to him. You know, I looked at a list for me. I said, you know, what are the things I would fear? What are some of the things that would, you know, and I began a family, situ family situations, health, you know, change the new year coming up, not the unknowns, the sense of responsibility and the heaviness of the weights of those things. And so then I said to him, so God, what are the promises that you've given me? I'm not going to focus on the problem. I'm going to focus on the promises. Then I'm going to begin to lift those promises up to you. We're shifting. Come on. Can you feel the shift? Come on. I want you to shift. I'm saying this a few different ways even so that you'll feel the shift as you begin to shift out of the place of the problem and into the place of problem promise, not problem, promise. How do we do that? Oh, we can't talk about the problem. We have to talk about the promise. We begin to focus on the good news, the good news. Jesus, he came, he came to the earth, the King, he, the Messiah, the promised one finally came. And there he was ready on the earth as a baby, Things were about to sh shift in the atmosphere. Things began to shift. The glory of the Lord came. And there was a hope that, oh, the promised one, the Messiah, he is here. Let's go see him. Let's go see the promised one. 
So we're shifting from the not seeing into the seeing. We don't know when's that going to happen? How's that ever going to happen? When's the Messiah coming? You know, but then the promised one comes. There's a promise. Now we begin to praise and begin to release the sound, the roaring praises of God. Release that sound into the earth. Release it into your situation. What's your health situation? What is, what is your family situation? What is your nation, national situation? Come on, our hearts are burning for this nation. There's so much brokenness. And God's, God's saying healing and deliverance. We release the glory into people. We can't do the healing. But God's drawing them to himself. And there is going to be the prodigals are coming home. There's salvation coming in. Because God is saying, now's the time. We're leaning into trust. We're leaning into the promise. We're saying, okay, God, we choose with our lips to say something different than we've been saying. We're going to praise you. We're going to bring the kingdom realm, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. You know, uh, Isaiah 9, verse 7, it says what? Of his increase of government and peace, there will be no end. That is the promised one. That is the good news. That is what your promises are filled with an increase of his government and peace, a non-ending increase of his government and peace. That's the promise of the Messiah that came. That's the promise that he brings to you, that promise of an increase of the kingdom of God. Not an increase of the problem, but an increase in the promise of the kingdom realm, that glory realm, righteousness, peace, and jo joy in the Holy Spirit. What are you going to speak today? What are you going to say today? What are you looking at? You're looking at your finances. You're looking at your health. You're looking at your family situation. You're looking at the government. You're looking at what is this world coming to? <laughs> and you're seeing something new. That's what 2024 is going to be. It is going to be a time of the roaring praises of God on your lips and the trust in your heart to see a triumph in a triumph in your life, a triumph over your sadness, over your sickness, over your thoughts. You're coming into maturity. You're coming into the kingdom realm where you're releasing the glory. You can't solve it. Just no, you can't solve it, but you can bring the glory for the solution. <laughs>